going to do a home energy assessment. We're going to walk through this place. I'm going to look at some key attributes of where we can reduce the artificial heating and artificial cooling, reduce the energy costs to make this house comfortable in order to reduce their carbon footprint in living in this dwelling. So today I'm in the living room of Petra and Luke and um, thank you for the opportunity of coming here and having a conversation and doing an appraisal of your house. You're welcome. So by way of um, starting this conversation, can you tell us just the experience that you have in the house, how the house and functions and how you and your son occupy and work through summer and work through winter, how the house functions for you in terms of heating and cooling? Mm -hmm. Okay, um, yeah, so in the summer we, uh, we use these outdoor shutters. Um, they, they go down and to, to we keep the heat outside and then also we close the curtains from all the rooms. And um, that's how we keep the house cool during the day. And in the nighttime we have fans and air conditioner in the bedrooms to keep the rooms cool if we need to. So predominantly, we try and capture the cool night air and then by nine o'clock in the morning, we close up all the windows. And then at, at seven o'clock at night, it can still be 35 degrees outside and we've got 26 inside. And you can, you can feel the cold when you walk in. So the, the shade, the curtains and the night air, so long as you don't be stupid leaving the doors open too long, um, give us a good cool. If you get a heat wave where you get two or three days of no cool night air, then we have to resort to um, possibly sleeping in one of the bigger bedrooms. All three of us can just use one air conditioner. Mm -hmm. and, that, and then we may or may not open the windows if depending on the heat is outside, but at least you can get a cool night sleep in one room. Yep. Okay. So, walk us through winter. What happens in winter? I chop a lot of wood. <laughs> <laughs> no, we've got the wood heater here, and we close the sliding doors and the, the all access doors to this room. So this room, we generate a lot of heat through the heater. So we, in winter, the wood heater is the main source of heat for the, this room, this large room that we, is the principal area of the house that we warm up. And we're aware that there's leaks under the door and the back door is not as tight fitting as, and it has a gap in the bottom that lets light through. And we try to close the gap for the sliding doors by putting a roll of carpet under the bottom and uh, sealing the doors um, but yeah it takes a lot of wood to you know keep, keep this room yeah, warm okay so what we'll do is we'll have a look at those leaks and for sure uh, you need to stoke the fire if you've got the window open and the metaphorical window will be the gaps under your doors the vents in your walls that are permanently open so that's why you need to have a good fire, a big fire, to heat this. And it will be very different when we go through a process of sealing up and looking for those opportunities in life. So we'll, we'll get to that as we walk through the house and look for opportunities. So the, the other principal area that we have, we have the old lounge room, which is now a TV room, and it's got a gas heater. Um, and again, we'll close the sliding doors in there and heat that room separately. So the, the, the two large rooms are heated just just for the use time. And it's funny because there's an upside and a downside to everything. Heating that room we know costs more. So we end up not watching television, we just stay in this room. 
So, Petra, did you have any other comments about, for you, what's your experience like in winter? In winter? In, um, in the house. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, besides just heating this room with the wood heater and the other room with the gas heater. Um, sometimes when the bedrooms are too cold, we just put the air condition on a bit to do it, heat it up. So, a little bit of background to the house. But how old is the house? Almost 70 years old, I think this year and it was my parents house um, when mum and dad originally got married mum thought she couldn't have kids so it only had the one bedroom which was the master bedroom and mine and my brother's bedroom was on the plans it was called a sewing room so mum six kids later <laughs> we we had one of this one of these rooms converted to my sister's room and my brother and I lived in the sewing room and then eventually they ironically by the time my brother and I left to go to boarding school they extended and added two more bedrooms at the far end of the house so my sisters had a bedroom each at the end and it's 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 quite a large house now compared to what it started um, 70 years old it was the first house in Tatura to have a indoors and outdoors toilet um, it uh, you know it's it's changed a bit since we've um, lived here this this area that we're sitting in was called the sun room and it was a tiny little room with a fireplace there and sun at your back so it didn't matter how cold the rest of the house got if you got a little bit of sun or a fire this room could be could have been warm so in some regards the way the house was could have been more energy efficient than all the changes we've made but you didn't have much space that was mm. warm mm. Um, so uh, we we prefer to have a more open living area and hence all the walls have gone yeah and and one thing the typical of most houses that are constructed in Australia is there's little regard to orientation and the house is designed to face the street and this house is no exception and apart from this small area of the house uh, it does not take advantage of uh, northern exposure so it misses out on a lot of uh, passive winter solar heating and it also has increased exposure to the summer heat and that is typical of most houses that are constructed in Australia. So the purpose of today's visit is not to rebuild your house, not to change the orientation of the house, but to look at the opportunities of tweaking and doing minor retrofits. And we know they will make a significant difference to the functionality of the house and how to keep enhance the retention of heating in winter and enhance the ability to have the house cooler in summer. We know that. We have done several thousand energy assessments in Northern Victoria. We know it works on a very small, tight budget. So let's go for a walk and let's have a look. 